Welcome to the fifth part of, of the periodic properties of the elements discussion. And in this discussion, we're going to look at some of those trends in um, specifically atomic radius, ionization energies, electron affinity, that kind of thing. And then we're going to look at the magnetic properties of ions based on their configurations. So this is something that I developed that I think helps you remember which way something goes. So a lot of these properties, how you apply this is you're trying to figure out what's got the highest ionization energy between two um, elements. And so I've come up with six of the most common properties that we look at. And I it, it sprang out at me that they had one of two qualifications. The highest value of those was either left and low on the periodic table, or it was high and right on the periodic table. And it ended up that there were three left and lows and three high and rights. So if you're looking at ionization energy, effective nuclear charge and electronegativity, the triple E's I call them, then the highest value of those is going to be high and right on the periodic table. So as far right as you can go looking at it and as far up as you can go. The atomic radius, the electron affinity, and metallic properties are going to be left and low. So the farther left or the lower you go, these properties are going to be the highest or the most pronounced. Now this won't work 100% of the time, but it'll work about 98% of the time. The only time it doesn't work is if they're really close to each other and you just can't determine it. You'd have to look it up. Okay? So the first one we want to look at is effective nuclear charge. And we talked about this a little bit too. It's the net positive charge that attracts the electrons in the nucleus. So those core electrons are shielded from those outermost uh, valence areas. And, they, and the, the, those outermost valence electrons don't officially shield one another from the nuclear charge. So in a periodic trend, and this is how it's typically explained in a book, effective nuclear charge increases as you go across a period and decreases as you descend down a column. But we know that the highest effective nuclear charge is going to be high and right. So if one element is higher or righter or both than the other, it's going to have a higher effective nuclear charge. So which atoms valence electrons experience the greatest effective nuclear charge? The valence electrons in magnesium, aluminum, or sulfur. If you look at the periodic table and see which one is the farthest to the right and highest, you're going to see that sulfur is because they're all in the same row, but sulfur is the one that's farthest right. And so since effective nuclear charge is one of the triple E's, which are high and right, then sulfur will be the greatest. The next we'll look at is atomic radius. Okay, An atomic radius is a left and low. Um, because you're adding electrons to the valence shell, the valence shell is held closer than the atomic radius um, decreases. If you're adding electrons to it, then it's going to get bigger. Okay, and so it's a high and I mean, it's, it's so it's a left and low. So atomic radius is a left and low. So look at these and tell me you look at nitrogen and you look at fluorine, which one is going to have a greater atomic radius. Now we said atomic radius is left and low, right? So in the case of nitrogen and fluorine, which one is farther left or lower? Nitrogen. So nitrogen would have a higher radius. What about carbon and germanium? Carbon is higher than germanium, right? But this is a left and low, so 
germanium, since it's lower, would have a higher atomic radius. See how this works? Once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. All right, let's look at C, nitrogen or aluminum. If atomic radius is left and low, then the one that's lifter and lower is going to be correct, and that would be, in this case, aluminum. All right, now let's look at that last one. We have aluminum and germanium. Now, aluminum is farther left than germanium, but germanium is lower than the aluminum, and so you can't predict this one. So, and that's fine. That just means if you want to know which one has the bigger atomic radius, then you're going to have to look it up. All right, notice that three out of those four, you could very easily tell by the left and low rule. And I've given you some practice so that you can get the hang of it. Remember, the answers to these are in the back of the workbook, or I also give them when you, where the in-class guided notes are in Blackboard. And that's it for those two trends.